can you just no, click no. no it was not done no okay and apart from this what else was not done the xylem and phloem uh, nutrition i can't hear you dear nutrition nutrition yes nutrition meaning all of the nutrition and everything nothing was done no ma'am so where have i done till new in the nutrition part hmm can you just check in your notebook like uh, like before this class like today's class uh, up till where have you written oh heterotrophic nutrition heterotrophic nutrition okay heterotrophic nutrition was completed right yes okay now we will talk about the nutrition in the case of human beings let us see how that happens okay okay all right okay you can switch on your video let's start today's class <clears throat> am i audible to you yes ma'am all right so uh, we were talking about the nutrition in the case of human beings so see nutrition in human beings is known as a holozoic mode of nutrition like we come under the heterotrophic and we are holozoic holozoic see what happens is that we take the food as whole meaning we take the food we put it in our mouth we chew it and then we digest it to get the energy from it so this type of mode of nutrition is known as holozoic mode of nutrition now in that there are five steps the first step is ingestion wherein the food gets ingested by us we take in the food we put it in our mouth we chew it and we swallow it this process is ingestion now after we have eaten the food then we digest the food so that process becomes digested why do we digest the food so as to get the nutrition from it now after digestion we absorb the food the food gets absorbed by us and then like after the food is absorbed now every single cell in our body requires the energy so that is sent or you can say distributed to the different parts of the body or different body cells by the process called as assimilation and lastly the food that did not get digested it will get ejected out meaning we will defecate it through the anus and that is so these are the five steps that occurs in the holozoic mode of nutrition clear okay now we have a proper digestive system as humans we have a proper digestive system and in our digestive system there is like the presence of an alimentary canal the first component of our digestive system is alimentary canal it is that you can say component of our digestive system that starts from the mouth and ends at the anus so from the mouth up till the end that is the anus is the alimentary canal of our body now apart from alimentary canal we also have the digestive glands present and digestive glands are liver pancreas and salivary glands now liver is our largest gland it is the biggest gland that is there in our body then we have pancreas we have salivary glands now the first thing that happens <coughs> see uh, in our food components of our food 
what are the components right see in our food we have carbohydrates we have proteins then we have uh, fat vitamins and minerals every single thing is present in our diet right we take carbohydrates from many sources we take proteins we take fat vitamins and now what happens is that the body they have to be digested right so initially when we take the food we put it in I'm our mouth am i audible aisha can you hear me hear me is my is voice not... fine now my voice is coming to you students yes ma'am dear because you know ma'am it's not clear it's not clear okay, just one second Hello, am I audible now, students? Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. So we were talking about see. We take the food, we put it in our mouth, and we start the process of nutrition. Now, what happens is that we take in the food and we start chewing it, right? Now, for chewing the food, we have our teeth present in our mouth. and we also have saliva in our mouth now the saliva contains an enzyme called as salivary amylase now what this enzyme does is that it starts the digestion of carbohydrates in the mouth so 30% of carbohydrates they get digested in our mouth now after that the food it passes like when we swallow it it the food from our mouth passes to the food pipe that is the esophagus now we can like once the food goes into the food pipe the food travels down to the stomach now how does the food travels down with the help of the peristalsis movement which is like if this is the food pipe it contracts and relaxes it contracts and relaxes which is because of which the food passes down through the food pipe and into the stomach now talking about our stomach it is a large j shaped storage structure which is present in our body and in the stomach these are the three things that are secreted we have hydrochloric acid pepsin and mucus now the hydrochloric acid what it does is that it physically breaks down the food by creating an acidic medium this hydrochloric acid is a very strong acid meaning even if one drop of it falls on a skin it will burn the area so this acid if it is such a strong acid it is present in our body so it physically breaks down the food by that acidic medium now the second thing which is secreted in our stomach is the pepsin now the pepsin what it does is that it digests the protein the digestion of protein component of a food that takes place in the like because of the pepsin in the stomach now we know that hydrochloric acid is such a 
strong acid so why does the wall of our stomach not get affected it's because the wall of our stomach is surrounded by mucus layer so it protects the stomach wall from the action of the hydrochloric acid clear any doubts up until now all right now from the stomach the food gets released into the small intestine now see because the food is coming from one organ into another organ so it is regulated by a sphincter muscle so in between the two organs there is the presence of a muscle which is known as sphincter muscle it regulates the opening of the stomach into the small intestine and what happens why is this sphincter present just imagine it like a gate so when the food is supposed to come down from the stomach to the small intestine it opens and the food moves down and then it closes and why why does it close it so that the food does not go back into the stomach because that will be very harmful so that is why these sphincter muscles are present now talking about the intestine it is the largest part of the alimentary canal the largest part it is the longest part also the length of the small intestine depends upon the type of organism for example if the organism is the herbivore since herbivores are the plant eaters so they do not need a very long small intestine because they like sorry they actually need a very very long small intestine why because they eat grass right and grass has cellulose in it so to digest cellulose it requires a longer period of time okay so that is why the herbivores they require a longer small intestine We're talking about the carnivores they need a smaller small intestine because carnivores do not eat grass rather they eat the meat and it is easier to digest the meat clear any doubts now in the small intestine every single component of the food gets digested every single thing the protein the carbohydrate the fat every single thing will get digested in the small intestine so we call the small intestine as the site of complete digestion of food meaning the digestion of carbohydrate digestion of protein and the digestion of fat now the small intestine receives the secretions from the liver which is the largest gland of our body and it also receives the secretion from the pancreas now liver and the pancreas are two of the digestive glands that are there now the food that comes from the stomach since hydrochloric acid was present in the stomach so the food is acidic now the pancreatic enzymes they act on this food and make alkaline meaning basic and then the liver it secretes bile juice which is used for the emulsification of fat emulsification means breakdown see for example if fat was this big of a molecule it gets broken down into many tiny tiny particles of fat now the pancreatic juice from the pancreas it contains the enzyme like trypsin for the digestion of proteins and the enzyme lipase to digest the emulsified fats which is the fats that have been broken down apart from this the wall of the small intestine also secretes enzymes which are known as intestinal juice it converts the proteins into amino acid the complex carbohydrates into glucose the fats into fatty acid and glycerol meaning now final digestion of all the components of the food has been done clear any doubts up until now okay now you can note it down you can switch off your video and write down comfortably
đơn làm Both of you are done? Yes, ma'am, I'm also done. Okay, you can copy down the Turn, ma'am. Both of you are done? Teacher, just a little bit. 
ओके ओके टेक योर टाइम इट्स ऑल teacher done
Both of you are done? Yes, ma'am. Done, students? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, moving forward, let's talk about more about the small intestine. Now, see what happens. That small intestine. It the site of complete digestion, meaning every single digestion, these tiny projections are known as villi. And these, meaning they are finger like projections. Okay, they are finger like projections. Meaning, what they do is that they increase the area for absorption. Apart from that, the, these villi, they are richly supplied with blood vessels. So since they are supplied with blood vessels, so every component of the food gets absorbed very quickly. Now, the reason why we absorb the digested food is to get energy from the food, to build new tissues and to repair the old tissues. Now, after the food gets digested in the small intestine, the undigested food moves into the large intestine. Here, water, mineral, vitamin, these all things get absorbed in the large intestine. All the food that gets digested, it gets absorbed in the small intestine only. But the water, the mineral, the vitamin, all of these things, they get absorbed in the large intestine. Now, after the food has been absorbed from everywhere, then there comes a process wherein the food which has not been digested, that part of the food gets excreted or you can say ejected out of the body by defecation. And uh, it happens through the anus. And what happens is that this anus is again provided with a sphincter that is known as anal sphincter. And this sphincter, what it does is that it regulates the opening of anus. So because of that, the food gets excreted out of the body. So with this, the whole entire process of digestion is completed. Do you have any doubts? No, ma'am. 
Digestion is clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now you can note this part down. 